there's nowhere for it to go when it, the tree sheds its bark and that's why we tend to get a concentration happening there. If you happen to overdo it, nil desperandum, you can always have a go at cleaning it up when the painting's dry. Much easier to work on it then anyway. The lit edge needs to be just broken here and there, otherwise the whole thing starts to look a bit contrived and a bit too sleek on that one side. Feather this back in. So you can actually see the tree taking shape already. Up into here, a bit more bark in there, and we just want to take the lightness out up here a tiny bit because we don't want the eye to run out of the top of the painting by following the line of the tree. I've choked the knife down a little bit there, just wanted to give it more control over it. Back into here. Bark colours, look, you can use almost anything you want. You can use colours you make up yourself, soft greys, grey browns, burnt siennas, uh, mixed with yellow ochres, almost anything at all. Um, because then you've got to go back over them and whack some highlights into that as well to, um, to make them look a little bit more interesting. So there we have a basic tree. I'll just throw a few highlights into that with a knife now. <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, never be frightened to put colour into a tree. This is a totally unretouched photograph. Have a look at the deep reds, the oranges, the greys, the silver greys, there's a hint of blue in here and this is not an extreme case. Some paintings, sorry, some trees are extraordinarily strongly coloured. So we're just going to use a little bit of a um, yellow ochre with a hint of the, uh, the red in it and just going to tap a little bit of that in here to put a bit of local colour and break that bark up a tad. Maybe go with a bit more red in it now, so it's a slightly redder colour as it rotates around into shadow. Okay, we're going to move into the finishing stages now. The painting has dried overnight, and or not dried, but at least become sticky enough that we can get some highlights to go onto it. I'm going to start with the background areas, work through our highlights coming forward to about here and then we'll sort of move in and we'll just do a few little examples of the highlighting on these middle distance trees and bushes. We'll then come in here, we'll highlight some of the trunks and branches and then uh, cut in and, and really do some uh, detail work on the foliage. Then come down here, finish off the lower sections of the painting. So these two background hills, mountains, whatever we like to call them, don't really require much attention. They're a very light value. We want to keep them a bit soft and misty. You'll notice I've got a couple of strokes on here experimenting with some highlight colours. We've got a very strong, warm light coming in here. And I really wanted to emphasise that on these hills. So I'm just using a small, uh, not a small, a medium-sized round uh, bristle brush, which I've loaded on one side with some lovely greyed off highlight colour, which is a mixture of um, all three of the primaries, the red, the blue and the yellow. And it's giving us a, an emphasising, or I'm emphasising, I should say, by means of this, the direction of the light and the quality and colour of the light, which is, we remember, has this lovely warm yellowy-orange quality. Hopefully early morning with the mists also reinforcing that effect. Now you'll notice I'm just jumping all over the place here so we don't end up with fingernail peerings, as I think I mentioned earlier on. Not too many hard edges and just some strokes will be very light, just barely touching the board. Others we can afford to link up to create the illusion of ridges and small areas of uh, highlighted foliage tops. So as we come down I'm going to lessen this considerably so that it gives the illusion once again of the atmosphere, the mists attenuating that warmer colour, which they do, and the eye doesn't have to sort of follow detail in every bit. You'll notice we've got some little gaps of uh, canvas showing through here and there. We'll clean those up in the final stages. But that's pretty much all we need to do for that particular ridge. We now need to come forward, highlight this area in here, these trees which are sitting on the, uh, the grassed uh, hill behind the houses. So we'll strengthen that colour up. Once again, I'll use a little bit of red, in this case uh, Spectrum Crimson, because it's got a nice cool red colour 
a little tiny hint of the um, green which I fabricated, the yellow green that is, from um, cadmium yellow and a little bit of the cerulean blue. And then we just fiddle around with this until we get a colour that feels right. A lot of this is about feel. So we just touch it on, look at it, has a sufficient degree of warmth, perhaps it's got too much warmth, we might just bring a little bit more blue into that and a little hint more of the green so it's not too fiery even though the light itself is quite warm, there we go and once again we're just going to run that light around the upper right hand sides of those groups of foliage creating the illusion of the sun coming in at about this angle it doesn't need to be too fussy, just bump it on remembering that there is a further stage in most of these works where we actually go back in and tidy up all our mistakes <clears throat> what mistakes they say, there's heaps of them believe me you'll notice in here we've got a bit of the colour sort of running over into the foreground no worries we can clean that up once again in that stage I just mentioned now if it were a bigger painting I would probably go in and I would indicate some little tree trunks now, probably the camera won't pick this up but these are just little scratches with the brush this is probably a bit small really to warrant it but it's just a bit of shorthand to indicate that there's some connecting branches and trunks in there okay come down now into this foliage line here this runs in behind the house and these would probably be um, domestically planted not natural foliage a couple of poplars two or three poplars in there and you know who knows what other trees we might have in there introduced so we can have a bit of artistic license here I'm going to swap this brush for a small filbert brush now which has got a slightly sharper edge on it because I'd like to emphasize the light a little more here as we're getting closer we have less um, diffusion of the light with the atmosphere so we'll start with these little fellows here and who knows we might just try something with a little bit of violet in it perhaps it's a jacaranda or something once again colour on the top of the brush we'll just bounce a little bit of that in there it's a little bit pink but it's okay so this is as I say just simulating in a very simple way maybe a jacaranda or some flowering uh, tree in behind these other trees and bushes we'll just give them a little bit of shorthand to get them underway obviously our poplars won't be our golden poplars if we've got a jacaranda flowering at this stage of the game we're probably around in October so we'll just get rid of this little bit of canvas in here with a little bit more foliage and just emphasize these a tad keep them up and down a little bit rather like a musical score so that we don't get too much of a repetition occurring coffee almost copped the brush then instead of the brush wash so we'll just highlight the top edge of those probably just a little bit of green in there I suspect with just a hint of warmth to keep that illusion of the warm light going once again in these stages it doesn't need to be too fussy the main thing is that we have the illusion of colour and light occurring at that distance a little bit more blue green here, I just wanted to break up that yellow green and then a little bit of colour on the poplars now to do distant poplars I tend to use a flat bristle brush and tilt it over on its side load it up on one side with the pardon me the colour we need and like so turn the brush over and align that edge with the vertical side of the poplar it's a bit strong but too much paint on that one and just tap that on there and hey presto up come our poplars a little bit of cooler colour on the back edge of it just to soften them in so they don't look too watery which they aren't and there we have something which will now pull the eye 
in towards the middle of the painting. It could just as easily have been cattle down in here, horses, sheep, um, somebody fishing. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is that there's some evidence of life. People like to see life in their paintings, um, except for the wilderness type paintings, obviously, where we don't have people. And this is a good way of doing it. Now, the two little buildings here, I'll just very quickly throw some sort of form into those. To do that, remember we just block them in with a little bit of um, white with a touch of cad yellow in it and we just need to give them a little bit of a roof. So we'll take a grade off orange red colour and we'll just whack a bit of a roof on here. This is probably the barn I would suggest, set back a bit further than the other one. Barn or an outbuilding of some sort. The house itself once again, don't be too fussy with it at this point. Just get it in, a bit of a veranda on it. And a little bit of shadow colour to define the lit and um, shadowed sides of the building. A touch of our old famous cerulean blue that we've been working with, or spectrum cerulean. Run a little bit of a shadow line under there and under here. Obviously the veranda would be casting a shadow couple of windows, shadow line out there, and a shadow line out there. Just a little bit more warmth in the roof. Perhaps a chimney or two stuck in there. We can tidy all that up later on, but at least it tells us they are buildings, rough as they may be. And don't forget you've got your finger there at times if you just need to blur the edge of something out and we can come back to that 